Welcome to a lesson on using rectangles to approximate the area under a curve or under a graph. If we can't find the exact area under a graph using a geometric formula, we can estimate the area under the graph using rectangles. Let's consider the area under the graph of f of x equals two divided by x and above the x-axis on the closed interval from one to five. Notice how we don't have a geometric formula that's going to give us this area here, but we can approximate this area using rectangles. To get an idea of how this works, let's look at an animation. What we can do is take the interval from one to five and divide it into equal subintervals. In this case, each subinterval has a width of one unit, and then we can form rectangles shown here to approximate the area under the curve. Notice how for each rectangle, we're using the function value on the left side to determine the height of the rectangle. And that's why these are called the left-sided rectangles. Also notice how the area of these four rectangles would be more than the area under the curve, which is shaded here in red, and therefore this approximation would be called the upper sum. But notice how as the number of rectangles increase, our approximation gets better and better. And just like here we're using left-sided rectangles, we can also use right-sided rectangles, shown here. Notice when using right-sided rectangles, we use the function value on the right side of each subinterval to determine the height of the rectangle. And notice how here, the area of the four rectangles would be less than the area under the curve, and therefore we'd call this approximation the lower sum. But once again, notice how as the number of rectangles increase, our approximation gets better and better. Let's use four rectangles to approximate the area, and we'll divide the closed interval from one to five into four equal subintervals, and we'll first use left-sided rectangles. So n is equal to the number of rectangles, so in this case n is equal to four, and because our interval is from one to five, a equals one, b equals five. So we'll first determine the width of each subinterval, or the width of each rectangle, which is equal to delta x, which would be b minus a divided by n, which in this case is equal to one. So each subinterval is going to have a width of one, and then because we're using left-sided rectangles, the height of the rectangles will be equal to the function value on the left of each subinterval. So our approximation for the area under the curve is going to be the sum of the area of these four rectangles. Let's call this first area a sub one, followed by a sub two, a sub three, and a sub four. So our area approximation is going to be the sum of these four areas. And again, because we're using left-sided rectangles, the area of a sub one is going to be equal to f of x sub zero, which is f of one, times delta x, which is equal to one. The area of the next rectangle is going to be f of x sub one, or f of two, times delta x, or times one. The area of the third rectangle is going to be equal to f of x sub two, or f of three, times delta x, or times one. And finally, the area of the fourth rectangle is going to be f of x sub three, or f of four, times delta x, or times one. So we see that information here in these first two formulas. So now we need to find these function values, find the products, and then find the sum. Well, f of one is going to be two divided by one or two. So this first area is two times one. f of two is going to be two divided by two or one. So the second area is going to be one times one. This third area is going to be f of three, which would be two thirds times delta x, which is one. And finally, the fourth area would be f of four, which would be two divided by four, one half, times delta x, or times one. And notice how the sum of these products is equal to 25 six, which is approximately 4.167. So this area approximation would be called the upper sum, again, because the area of these four rectangles is more than the area under the curve. Now I do want to mention this is called the left-hand sum, the left-hand sum is not always the upper sum, it's only the upper sum if our function is decreasing over the interval. If our function was increasing, the left-hand sum would actually be the lower sum. Now let's do this again, and this time we'll use right-sided rectangles. 
So again, the width of each rectangle is still going to be equal to one, but now the height of each rectangle will be determined by the right side of each subinterval rather than the left. Notice how this first rectangle has a height of f of two, not f of one like we had when we were using left-sided rectangles. So let's go through this process again. We'll call this area sub one, area sub two, area sub three, and area sub four. So notice how for this first rectangle, the height is going to be f of x sub one, which is f of two, and the width is going to be delta x, which is equal to one. So this first area is f of x sub one times delta x, which is really f of two times delta x. The second rectangle has a height of f of x sub two, or f of three, and a width of delta x, or one. So we have the second area is f of x sub two times delta x, which is f of three times delta x. The third rectangle has a height of f of x sub three, which is f of four, and a width of delta x, or one. So the area is f of x sub three times delta x, or f of four times delta x. And flying for our last area, this rectangle has a height of f of x sub four, or f of five, and a width of delta x, or one, which again is shown here in our formula. So now we find these function values, find the products, and then find the sum. Notice all the delta x's are equal to one, f of two is equal to one, f of three is equal to two thirds, f of four, is equal to two-fourths or one-half, and finally f of five is equal to two-fifths. So our area approximation now is 77 thirtieths, which is approximately 2.567. And notice how here the area is less than the area under the curve, and therefore this would be considered the lower sum. Let's look at the left-sided and right-sided rectangles next to each other. So here are the left-sided rectangles, and here are the right-sided rectangles. Notice for the left-sided rectangles, we use the function values at x equals one, two, three, and four to determine the height of each rectangle. And for the right-sided rectangles, we use the function values at x equals two, three, four, and five to determine the heights of the rectangles. And of course, if we increase the number of rectangles, our approximation would be better. So in general, we can say that if f is continuous and non-negative on the closed interval from a to b, then the area under the curve is going to be approximately equal to the sum of f of c sub i times delta x, where these products represent the area of rectangles. And notice how for our two examples, we use the left side and the right side to determine the height of the rectangles. In this formula here, we're using c sub i, where c sub i can be actually any value in each subinterval. So we could use the midpoint or any x value in the subinterval to make our approximation but the three most common x values to use would be the left end point, the right end point, or the midpoint of each subinterval. Let's end with a definition of what the area would actually be equal to, not just an approximation. Let f be continuous and non-negative on the closed interval from a to b. The area bounded by the graph of f and the x-axis and the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of f of c sub i times delta x from i equals one to n. So notice here, n is a number of rectangles, so as n approaches infinity, this limit is equal to the actual area under the curve and above the x-axis on the interval from a to b. Going back to our animation, this should make sense. This is telling us that as the number of rectangles approach infinity, this area is going to approach the area under the curve. Again, it doesn't matter whether we use left-sided rectangles or right-sided rectangles, that definition holds true. In fact, we can use any x value in each subinterval. I hope you found this helpful.